for lots of people, a nine to five is an office window looking at the next person's cubicle. For us, we want that dream to include overlooking a beach in Bali on our laptops or a gorgeous Mount Fuji from our short-term apartment in Japan. We do. Becoming a digital a nomad is a minefield of things to know, things to do, things to organise. And one of the hardest things that you'll ever have to look into is the difference between a digital nomad visa and a tourist visa. So for us, uh, a lot of our planning is around probably spending a lot of time in Asia, being a digital nomad or you know living their location independently. And just to get into the spirit of all this, I'm going to uh, don my grab helmet today for our little tale about Asia. I'm so, that. <laughs> I bought this as a souvenir in Vietnam a couple of years ago because uh, grab is great when you're in Asia to get food or cars or rides or whatever you want. That's really cheap. So the difference. So when you go and head off to be a digital nomad or whatever you want to do, work independently, live location independently, um, you will come face to face with the fact that you can either get a digital nomad visa or you can live with tourist visas. So the big difference is the amount or length of stay, I guess. So if you get an actual digital nomad visa, well, then you can stay in countries for six months, 12 months, two years, depending on what country you're looking at. Um, if you only go the tourist visa route, that means you'll only be able to stay in certain countries for maybe one month, then you get an extension for possibly another month, um, then you have to leave the country, come back into the country, so there's always visa runs that have to be done. If you do it that way, um, look, that suits a lot of people because a lot of people don't want to stay in the one destination for six months or 12 months, mm. and that would be us a lot, yeah. like we'd be happy to stay somewhere for a month, maybe two months in the same country before moving on. We've done visa runs before when we were long-term traveling and they're, how would you say, they're a hassle. They're hard to navigate. You have to keep an eye on things. So it's a difficult thing yeah. to, to sort of do visa runs all the time. When did we do one? We got one from, we were in Chiang Mai in Thailand. We had to catch a bus to Chiang Mai and then on to Misai on the Thai border and we had to cross over into Myanmar uh, just for an hour or two which was yeah. a funny situation because you had to actually go across the border and hand your passport to the Myanmar border guards with a $10 US note in it. Crisp, crisp note, yeah. yes. Had to be crisp note perfect. from the yeah. bank. So, And then you had to uh, go into Myanmar for an hour or so. We went in and walked around this really massive market and had, had, a, a, had, a, had a beer and yeah. had a drink and came back and they gave us our passports back, back, back into Thailand yeah. and checked in for a new visa. Um, so yeah, so it can be can be quite yeah, yeah complicated and it's probably okay in countries maybe like Thailand where you can catch a bus, but if you're in Bali or somewhere like that, you actually have to fly out of the country. So, you know, you'd have to fly to Singapore or even Darwin, Australia or somewhere like that yeah. and then come back into Bali. Um, but yeah, so look, some of the countries in Asia that actually offer a permanent digital nomad visa include uh, Malaysia, Japan and South Korea. Now, they all have requirements for you to do this. Um, Malaysian one seems to be the most popular one. You only have to show proof of income of, say, making $24,000 US and you can stay there for up to two years, uh, which is really good value. In Japan, though, it's a different story. You have to show $68,000 USD, so that would be $100,000 Australian, that your proof of income being made online because, obviously, you can't be working for someone. Um, and that only allows you to stay for up to six months. And South Korea have a similar one. This is 68,000 US, so even more for 12 months. So so these sort of visas, like we said earlier, suit people who maybe just want to immerse themselves and move somewhere in one place, different place for a 12-month period or six-month period or a two-year period. Um, we've got friends who are just about to take up the Malaysian one. They're going to live in Penang. So uh, maybe we'll get them on board and on for an interview yeah. after a few months after they, see how they after, settle see how they settle in they've got two little kids so um so yeah so we'll check in on them and see how they're going in penang with the malaysian one but yeah but like we said there's certainly other countries that just offer a tourist visa with the tourist mm -hmm. run yeah 
Some of the most popular ones being, uh, obviously, like we said, Bali. You can get 30 days going in. You can extend it for another 30 days at immigration once you, after your 30 days is up. So there you get two months in Bali. But then you can just, like I said, fly to Singapore, fly back in, and it starts all over again. And you'll find that there's a really large digital nomad uh, community there as well uh, from lots of different countries. So it is obviously working for some. It won't always work for everybody, unfortunately. No, that's it. And Thailand is obviously another one that's hugely popular with foreigners who want to live and work in another country. So they actually have a similar thing. I think you can get a 30, you get a 30 or a 60 day visa on entry. It can be uh, extended once. You've got to go to the immigration office or you can do the visa run like me and Beck said we did out to a different country bordering it and then you'll get an extension. But after that, you have to fly out and fly back in. But I think you can only do this two or three, two or three times mm. and then you have to take a break from doing it much like in Europe in the Schengen. Um, Vietnam is another good one. It has 90 days straight up. So you've got three months straight up in Vietnam and then you can just actually go across the border and come back in like the other ones. So these countries are good for short-term stays. Uh, if you want to have a look around the country, like for instance in Vietnam, you might lob into Ho Chi Minh City and then you might want to go to... Some of the real digital nomad hotspots like Da Nang, which is in the middle of the country, and stay there and you know get involved in a community of nomads or head up to Hanoi, whatever you like. So that is a really good option for doing that. We'll definitely be going to Vietnam. We'll definitely go to all these places. So Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, <laughs> Indonesia. We've been to South Korea and it's well, it's yeah. a gorgeous country. We would love to actually drive around yeah, there and yeah. see it was we found it a little di bit difficult but we'll yeah. talk about that another time yeah so basically short-term tourist visas are the way to go if you only want to stay somewhere for like a month at a time or two months at maximum and that's probably where we're at so we'll have a look at the situation in europe in a video coming up and talk about europe because there is a ton of countries that offer full digital nomad visas in europe some really good ones some really bad ones. Um, one thing I did forget to say though, is if you do actually get a full digital nomad visa in some countries, then you're liable to actually pay income tax. So you'd have to pay income tax in that country and income tax in your home country, which can add up to being quite expensive. So that's why a lot of people just go the short term tourist visas, you know, don't declare they're working, <laughs> just declare that they're on holidays. And I mean, and really you're not, you just, in a hotel or a cafe working like you're not taking jobs off off people off locals so um and yeah and that's why a lot of people do it that way because it's uh, a lot easier so but you do need to make sure that you are doing it correctly and you are doing it above board yeah because definitely. at the end of the day you don't want to cause any issues for yourself no. online or with another government no. you may not understand their legal system or anything like that it that's could end it. up being very messy it definitely you don't take the time to understand. Anyway, that's our video for this week. Uh, you know, a little bit more information on what we're going to do and where we're going to go, hopefully in the future. So we look forward to you tuning in again next week or next fortnight. Quite whenever obviously, we're here around who it. knows more about this than what I do. <laughs> so just an update for anyone who watched the last video about uh, us riding the scooters well we went and had a look at a scooter the other day and we're going to put in a bid on it tomorrow it's an older model honda that's already that had a couple of crashes already had a couple of crashes we bought some <laughs> scooter helmets the other day and uh we're going to go get our learner's permit next month so it's all happening so look forward to more footage and videos regarding scooters and, and licenses and, and hometown's newest taxi service most definitely <laughs> once we get it and we can ride around we'll set the gopro up and uh give you a bit of a tour of our hometown yeah. via the scooter that should be fun shouldn't it <laughs> there will not be as much traffic as there is in vietnam or in <laughs> bali i can tell you that much we might actually get very unlucky one day and get stuck behind a tractor we might mm. we could or you know i might have to <laughs> Yeah, actually wait and give way to a car. <laughs> That's a little bit different. But yeah. anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in again. As usual, we will talk to you soon.